In this tutorial, we're going to look at what it means to overload a method. And very quickly, we have a super class or a parent class that we define with certain methods in it. Let's suppose we have an init method. We create an instance object or a subclass, and we can create a method at this level with the same name as the parent. And when we do that, this method can override the superclass method. And we may want to do that when we want an object to inherit most of the properties of its parent, but some characteristics uh, might we might want to be unique to the, to the object. And we'll talk more about that as we get into it. So we're going to look at overloading methods. We've created our point class before, and we've seen that we've instantiated an object A using the point constructor, and then we set the X value and set the Y value. But setting values this way is pretty tedious. Why can't we do it all in one statement? So this is what we would prefer to do. We would prefer to instantiate the object at the same time, but also set its X and Y value. And we can do this, we've seen that we can do this with int classes and fraction classes. x equals int 93, we've seen that the int is a constructor and we've given it a value at the same time. We also used fractions and created fraction objects uh, by also setting the numerator and the denominator at the same time. So how is this done in Python and how can we do it in the classes that we construct? Okay, so let's talk a little bit about classes and superclasses. Every Python class is based on a parent class. Uh, and at the very top of the whole hierarchy of objects is a parent class called object. So everything inherits from object. There's a name for the parent class, and I've used it at the intro. It's called a superclass. And classes created or objects created from a class are called uh, a subclass. Sorry, classes created from a, from a parent is called a subclass. The object superclass, the one that's at the very top, has many methods that all classes inherit. Now, sometimes we don't want or we want an object to behave slightly differently um, for certain things. Uh, we'll give an example here. So at the very top we have a superclass called object and let's suppose we have these two methods called add and draw. And we create a subclass or we create an object based on that and that's fine. We can uh, um, we can define a subclass that inherits from object and, and we want to inherit the draw method uh, for our new subclass. But maybe we want the add method to behave slightly differently. Well, what we can do when we define the subclass is we can redefine, we can create a new definition for the add uh, method. When we do this, and we're using the subclass, uh, what Python does is if there's a local method for add, it will use that, it will not inherit the add method from, uh, from the superclass. And we call that overloading. So in our previous example, that add method in the subclass overloads the method in the superclass. So we're going to use this concept of overloading to solve our desire to construct an object and initialize it at the same time. And the way we're going to do it is we're going to overload a method in the Python object, the very top level object. Uh, there's a method called underscore underscore init underscore underscore. So you'll find these special methods have two underscores at the beginning at the end. And that's just a way of identifying them visually. Every time an object is instantiated or created, this method is invoked. And so we're going to overload this method. So let's go back to our point class that we defined before. 
So here's our point class. And we had this set X and set Y. We're going to add a new method to it as shown here. And I would encourage you to get your point class out and actually do these uh, at the same time. So what you'll notice here is that I've created this new init routine. There are two underscores here. They just sort of show as one. Uh, I've also removed the set X and set Y methods because they're no longer needed. How will we use this? Well, we'll first have to execute it by hitting F5. And we're going to instantiate X, a new point, by now using this. Oh, whoops, I need a comma. For two variables. And now if we did x dot x, that would be our x value. x dot y is our y value. But notice what happened here when I only put one number, 3.4. I didn't put two. Notice I get uh, a missing argument, and it gives me a uh, throws an exception and sort of crashes. So what if we don't want an error? What if, what if I just want to set the x value? Maybe I don't want to set both values or maybe I don't want to set either value. If I just want to hit x equals point, what's going to happen? So how can we handle that? Well, it's possible to initialize values by giving them uh, right here, sort of a default value. So we can say equals zero. So if I do not put an x value, it will assign it a zero value, and a y value uh, will be zero as well. So these are our defaults. So we need to re-execute that. We can go, I'll just go my p for my point equals point. And now if I don't put anything in, I don't get an error, my p dot x and y are both zero. If I put one value in, one question is, well, which one does it take? Well, let's assign that to x. Could I assign it just to y? I don't know. Maybe if I put that, no. I don't think you can assign it just to y. If you only put one parameter, it'll give it to x. If you put two, it'll give it to x and y. If you put none, it'll use the defaults that are inside. Here's an example of using a playing card class and defining the card uh, at the same time. So I have card class. I've overloaded the init uh, method with what's called a rank and a suit. And a rank is a number from a literal rank from uh, A for ace, uh, 2 to 9, jack, queen, king. And then this is a Unicode character which represents the club, the heart, the spade. Uh, or the diamond. And so we can define, once we, to use this card class, we would instantiate my card with, I would use the constructor, and then I'd pass two arguments, one for the rank and one for the suit, and that would be the card. As our final example, we're going to look at modifying the animal class to take um, zero, one, or two arguments here and to sort of exhibit this type of behavior. So let's bring up our animal class here. And let's modify it um, to do this. So your exercise is to pause the video, see if you can take this, modify it, and get the behavior that you see here. So note here we overloaded init by creating this method. We set species equal to animal and language equal to sounds as a default. If those values are added, then they'll uh, get set to these instance variables. So let's see how this works. So I can create Snoopy again as a dog. 
And if I say snoopy.speak, we get the behavior as before. Tweety, let's just say we specify the first of the species. And you'll see I'm a canary and I should say I make sounds. So I should have had here make sounds. Now, what if I just say animal equals animal. You'll notice that classes typically start with capital letters. And I don't put any parameters. Then when I hit speak, it'll take the default here. I am a animal and I make sounds. We didn't take care of the a or the an, but we get the behavior that we've seen here. So this is a way of overloading the init of the superclass, which allows you to, um, to specify instance variable values at the same time that you're using the constructor to, um, to instantiate or create an object.